Hi, I'm Lyle. And I'm Tristan. We're so happy to be back with you guys on the first episode of The North Star. We have so many great segments for you. First up, we will be diving deep into the world of technology and learning. We've interviewed teachers, administrators, and experts on how ChatGPT can be used in a learning environment. Let's see what they have to say. ChatGPT is relatively new. Um, really started hearing about it more at the end of last school year. Just had a lot of conversations with other teachers about just what it was and how students are using it and if like any of us had any experience with it. Um, haven't really got into it much this school year, but we're definitely gonna cover it and talk about it at some point this year. My take is that we're getting very capable systems. You can see this just in terms of metrics. If you look, if you measure ChatGPT's performance, for example, on standardized tests, you can see that it can get five, a score of five across many AP exams. You can see it can get better scores on standardized tests such as the GRE and the LSAT than most humans. So we can we can objectively see that these systems are quite capable. It's like cell phones. I mean, you can say everybody put them away and that's fine, but they're going to be out. They're going to be used and, and they can be used effectively if you use them properly. Finding ways to use new technology in classrooms in a way that is productive and helpful to students to and to show students how to use <clears throat> things responsibly. Um, it's, uh, I would equate it to like a cell phone. Uh, there are laws that have been passed on cell phones because people are using cell phones when they drive. So technology can be abused and used in a wrong way and technology can be really helpful to us and do that. This is the future that we're headed towards and so both educators and students should be thinking about where the future is headed and how we design education that's preparing students for the future and th that's being a part of the future. I feel quite confident that these AI models are here to stay and that they're, they're going to be an integral part of the future. So they'll change the way we live, they'll change the way we work, they'll change the way we learn. There are a lot of opportunities for educators that to use this technology for good. There is a, there's a level of integrity that we expect everybody to have and uh, when we violate that integrity, we need to address that. So your question was how can we trust students? We trust students every single day. I don't even think trust is the right question. Uh, I, think, I think that teachers are going to have to learn for themselves how to incorporate it into their practice, how to spot when students are using it, how to create assignments that have it in mind, either as something that they want them not to use and how they're going to work through that or that they want them to use and what that looks like. I really try to emphasize that I want to hear my students' own opinions and their own voices. In terms of the cheating, I, it doesn't strike me as anything that's too fundamentally new. We already have this problem in math class. It, it's already understood that certain problems a graphing calculator can solve for you. Now the English department is going to have to come around and realize that just how a graphing calculator in your pocket could solve the math problems, we're going to have AIs in your pocket that could solve the English problems. Yeah, how, how can teachers use these AI models in education without taking away from the integrity of the teaching, the integrity of the learning, and the integrity of the students? If the instruction is given, on a, on a test or a project, you may not use this resource and then someone uses it. It's cheating just as any other plagiarism or any other violation of the rules would be. If you look at ChatGPT as a, a very aggressive search engine, as a way of getting ideas, of ways of getting other sources that you can then pull from, I think that's great. Your principal has made the statement that AI models are like a search engine with additional bells and whistles. I think that's a false comparison. To me, this is fundamentally different from a search engine. We're having a college level understanding in these AI models, and this will only get more powerful in the future. In the coming years, they're only gonna get smarter, and they're gonna continue to be able to do college level academic work and beyond. Um, much, much more powerful than, than a search engine. I encourage students to use um, ChatGPT uh, to do things like uh, create outlines. If I have a topic, I don't know kind of where to begin of how I want to go about doing research. And I think um, using this platform uh, to uh, build an outline um, is, is a fantastic way to um, it's a fantastic way just to kind of get, kind of the, kind of grease the, the wheels a little bit. But you know, the problem is, is that it's blocked by the school district. Um, so I'm going to ask students to do this at home if they have a chat GPT account. But I think we absolutely should open it up to students. Um, but here's the, the kind of the qualifier. 
I think with that, you have to pair that with um, educating students on the proper uses of, of ChatGPT. So I think if we were able to teach students how to work with the technology in a way that benefits us and not just use it to get out of an assignment, I definitely think it could be a positive in that way. I really hope that um, instead of um, um, limiting its use, I, I think we should, should really just open the doors up to it and help students um, figure out how to navigate, um, not just its use for, from an application perspective, but its use from a, um, you know, an ethical and, and, and responsible perspective. So. Welcome to Teachers Gone Bonkers, a new segment where our educators compete head-to-head -head against each other in an epic battle of wits. This month, we have Mr. Nolan from the Science Department and Mr. Engel from the English Department. Let's see who comes out on top. Okay, yeah, I'm actually sure. skipping the first question because I don't want to make you like do math. Uh, name the three subatomic particles that make up an atom. Proton, neutron, and electron. Look at that! <laughs> Bravo! I'm pretty uh -huh. sure, I didn't think he's going to get that one. All right, are you ready? I'm so ready. I oh, actually, you, no, I don't think I would I am, like but, you yeah. to identify the verb in the following sentence. Okay. When the sky is out, my thighs are out. That's actually tough. Uh, when the sky is out, my thighs are out? Is it, is it out? Is the verb? No, but I'll give you another shot. Okay, when the, Maybe when you should look the, at your own thighs for inspiration. When the sky is out. Uh, when the sky is out, the thighs are out. You Your thighs. Your thighs are out. Well. What's doing action? Is that even a complete sentence? Your thighs are out. It is. Okay. It's R. Oh, it's R. <laughs> but I think I missed that one. <laughs> R is a verb? R is a verb. God, it's I hate English so read. much. Ugh. Oh, you all knew that though, right? Yeah. You guys know that? Wait, you did it. Oh, man. Yeah, English is tough. Is Way tougher than chemistry. Yes. Okay. Yeah, got it. Okay, okay. Excellent. This famous scientist is credited with inventing the modern version of the periodic table. Dan Henry. Is that your final answer? <laughs> He's dead now, if that's helpful. Henry's dead? No, no, the person who invented it's dead. Fermi. No. So, no, it is uh, Dmitry Mendeleev. You guys knew that, right? I know, see, that's why chemistry's so much better. That would be on like your unit three tests, by the way, people who are currently my students. <laughs> All right, next question. This is an easy one. <laughs> Spell Ooh. chemistry. Oh. Watch him screw this. It's like in do, because it's got that CH at the beginning, so it's like, even though it goes K, it's a ch. So, C H E M. I S T R Y, chemistry. Correct. I thought you might too, honestly. I, you know what? I, you didn't know this about me in third grade. I won the class spelling bee. Yeah. Uh, you didn't know he's got a, such a heavy hitter here. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get that information. Yeah. No. Sorry. Sorry. This is an easy one. Any ninth grader should get this. So you should get this. What is the name of the molecule that codes for proteins? The name of the molecule uh -huh. that codes for proteins. For proteins. Mm -hmm. It has the codes that we use to that make proteins. Here's a hint too. It's a rather big molecule. The as, sun. As molecules go. The, the sun. sun. No. Go, go again. Codes for proteins. It has to be with living things. Living things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like everybody rock your body. No, but to rock your body, you do need this. You need Bodies this. will not rock milk. without this. It's not milk. <laughs> Guys, what is it? DNA. Yeah, I would have accepted RNA as well. <laughs> you would have accepted RNA? All right, I have one. Identify the silent letters in the following words and explain why they might be necessary. Oh. 
gnome. Gnome. Right. Uh -huh. So why is the G necessary in gnome? Oh, I don't know. It's because English is how about this absurd. One? Knock. Oh, yeah, the, the K at the beginning, right. yeah. Uh-huh. Right, does that make sense? Sure, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Eric with an H. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. Um, my first name is Eric, and it has an H at the end. So it's always weird, So which leads me to always answering this kind of question. My mom was trying to be kind of a little bit individualistic, right? So German roots, it's the German spelling of Eric is, is why. All yeah, right, so. I will give you those. those are, that's is that a trivia question? Answer. Yeah, that was, no, that was my question. Oh. Okay, cool. Yeah, right, okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Actually, the cardboard cutout is the winner. <gasps> is it really me? Perfect. It is for you. Okay. He's always the winner. Number one. Well, I do teach science. In your hearts, number one on the charts. Congratulations. It, it was, you know what? You are <laughs> the most worthy opponent. Let's check out Pet of the Month to see whose pet is the cutest this month. Hi, my name is Eva Kuselius, and this is Cutest Pet of the Month. Every month, you submit your pets, and we decide whoever's cutest for that month. While well, all the lovely submissions you guys sent in were absolutely adorable, one special man totally won our hearts. Walter the Golden Retriever loves being called a good boy and suffers from seasonal allergies. He's known for taking his owner's hands and leaving them in his mouth until he's offered a toy. While all the contestants have won a special place in our hearts, two runners-up were absolutely amazing. This month's runners-up are Maple and Pierre. Thanks for tuning in for Cutest Pet of the Month, and remember to submit your pets for a chance to be on the North Star next month. See ya! This year's girls golf team is very young. Let's see how they've been doing on the course. I am the Social Studies Department Chair, as well as the Director of Service Learning, so I oversee the Senior Internship Program community service schools, community service nonprofit, and cadet teaching, as well as coach girls golf. So what made you decide to join golf? Um, well, both of my parents played golf in high school, and so they definitely had a big influence on me in deciding to join the team. And so I kind of just would practice with them and then played. What makes the girls North golf team different from the other sports teams? Well, there's a variety of reasons. One of them is we're actually playing and practicing off-site, so it's not property of the MCCSC, which creates its own set of logistical challenges. We also have a pretty small team. There's no middle school golf in the MCCSC, so most of the golfers that are part of Bloomington North golf team, when they come in as freshmen, more than likely they're beginners. I think in the 25 years I've been coaching, probably 80% of all the boys and girls I've ever coached were beginners. So other sports, you know, you're getting experience with that given sport at a much younger age. With golf, it's a lot different. So those would be the two big differences from other sports. My first season on the golf team has been really fun. I played last year, so this is like kind of a second season, not really, but it's been a lot of fun. And having like Darian, our senior on the team, to help us with that makes it even better. So, why did you decide to coach the girls' golf team? Well, I love golf. I like I like working with young people. When I student taught at Bloomington North a very long time ago. George Fielding was the golf coach and for four years I was his volunteer assistant and then when he retired as counselor and as coach from Bloomington North I took over as head coach of boys and head coach of girls and so I love the sport I love the opportunity 
to kind of use it as a microcosm of life to try to teach life lessons. And I also like to compete. So add those things up and it's a fun coach to sport, a fun sport to coach. What do you plan on doing in college? Do you plan on like playing golf? Um, I would like to play golf in college, um, but I, the field that I plan on studying in kind of really limits whether or not I can play golf because I can't play at a D1 level, but I'd like to play on another level. Yeah, I plan to continue. I'm hoping all throughout high school too, so because I've had so much fun already and I know that I'll be able to learn a lot more in the following seasons. Um, how have your years of playing on the golf team been? Um, they've been really good and I've definitely learned a lot. Like going into golf, you kind of feel really clueless. So um, being able to play in a lot of tournaments and meet a lot of new people, you kind of just get a lot of experiences that help with building your golf game. How does the team, how does the future look for the team? Well, in my 25 years, this is by far the youngest golf team we've ever had. We have one senior, one sophomore, and five freshmen. So with the one sophomore and the five freshmen, they're inexperienced. They came in relatively new to the game. And so while it creates some struggles now. It's also super positive in the sense that they enjoy being at practice. They want to get better. They're fun to be around. So hopefully they can kind of grow and get excited about the game, want to get better. And then, you know, if we can get some other incoming freshmen next year, you know, we can have an opportunity to just each year get a little bit better and a little bit better. For the future, I think We'll have some really good seasons since we're all freshmen and we'll be able to learn a lot and we'll be with each other. I know that we'll have some great seasons and I know that we'll have some new players coming in too then that will be fresh and we'll be able to help teach them some stuff too. How has it been playing with most of the freshmen this year? Um, I've actually really enjoyed it because it's, I kind of, I feel like I get to help them. Like I feel like I can help coach them too. And I just, like being around them. They're all great. Yeah, um, so why did you decide to join the golf team? I originally, I was in middle school and I originally didn't think I wanted to do it, but Sadie helped me realize I did want to and nobody in my family actually ever played, so I was the first in my family, but I realized it's been a lot of fun, so. Yeah. Did you play golf before high school? I mean, not competitively like my first actual tournament was the summer before my freshman year so I guess kind of but I did go out with my parents and play because you know they both play so so, um, so have other players been kind of like, you in your freshman year? Yeah Darian has big, been a big mentor for me throughout this season she's helped me with a lot like my swing making contact with the ball she's helped me with so much and like realizing I shouldn't be too nervous about going to tournaments and matches that it's it's just a tournament and match freshman year so if anyone has any questions about joining a team what should they do they can come to room 513 here in the social studies wing at Bloomington North they can send me an email if they go on the North website and look under social studies. You can find my name and email address. And those would probably be the two easiest ways. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the first episode of the North Star. We hope to see you in the next one. Roar! Roar!